Amen. To God be the praise. Amen. Amen. To God be all the glory and the honor. Amen. God is ready, I believe, with his word. The question is, are we ready to receive it? Amen. We've been talking about last week, we started or we started looking at and a very important and a very practical thing that is needful uh, across all age groups, across all stages in life, is having a good support system in our lives. Amen? Right from the first day baby, a newborn baby, till somebody is 100 years old. Somebody who may be very muscular, very strong, very agile, somebody who is very influential, somebody who is poor, somebody who is rich, somebody who is educated, somebody who is not educated. Across the spectrum, everybody needs support system. Hallelujah. Just like the children need the parents, a time comes where the parents need the children. Hallelujah. Are you with me? That's, a, that's a, like a, a cycle of life or the circle of life, however you, how you want to put it across. Hallelujah. The same child that you're taking care of or your, uh, what do you call, are a support system to them. The same children when they grow up and when they are brought up in the right way, they become a support from the parents. Hallelujah. So at any stage, at, at any age or at any level, in any country, you'll see that every one of us requires some sort of support or the other. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Rich are no exception. Rich people are no exception. Influential people, powerful people are no exception. They also need support. Hallelujah. As long as their blood is red, they require support. Are you with me? It's a different thing when somebody's blood is blue. That's fine. But if somebody's blood is red, they definitely require support. There's nobody on the face of the earth can say, I'm the richest man on the earth and I don't need support. Of course, you would need support at any given point in time. And last week, we talked about God being our support system. God being our support system. Hallelujah. And we drew a lot of wisdom, a lot of things from the life of Moses looking at him. The way he started, he was not a perfect man. He was not a complete perfect man, like in, in all respect. He had a lot of problems, a lot of issues. God had to fix him in his head. God had to heal him. God had to deal with him first. And a time came when God touched him and the way God prepared him for the next move, the Bible says what? He never deviated from that thing that he found God as a support system. He never moved away from that. He remained till the end as God being his support system. If you want to know more details about it, it's going to be on the YouTube at 8.30 in the evening today. It's going to be its premiere at 8.30. You can go and watch it. Last week's message. But there was one point that I missed in Abu Dhabi church. You remember the prodigal son? Remember the prodigal son? He was in his father's house all along. And one fine day, he just comes to his dad and said, Whatever belongs to me, whatever is my share, give it to me now. And the father was very happy to part what belonged to him, he happily gave it. He said, okay, this is yours, this is for you. If you look at that story, the way the son behaved, the way the son behaved in that whole scenario, it just goes to say, he said that, I can't wait for you to die. I need it now. Because normally the inheritance is enjoyed after the father's death. After the parents pass away, then the children begin to enjoy. The way he said it like, I need it now. He said, I can't wait for you to die. I need to enjoy it now. And the father parted. And you know the story how it ended. He landed in a place where he was taking care of pigs. And the Bible says when he came back to his senses, he returned back home. And the Bible says what? He was restored back where? In the father's house. What's the point that I want to make? We have a father above. Make sure that he, he's always your support system. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he could see the son from a great distance. Maybe he had a very unique way of walking. The father recognized, that's the walk of my son. He didn't wait for anybody else to pounce on him, but he reached out to him and he embraced him. He clothed him. He, 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 he cleaned him up, celebrated and all kinds of, you know the story, what happened? So the point is, as long as we are in the father's house, we have a perfect support system. 
while on this point i also want to make another thing a blessing that is released in our lives before time before its season can become a curse be careful before you ask god bless me bless me with this bless me with this bless me if that blessing is out of season can become a curse are you with me church he asked for a blessing he was not ready to handle it he was not capable to handle it did he handle it not at all he messed it up he messed up everything that was given to him because it was supposed to be a blessing but in turn it became a curse for him because bible says what he left he began to live in a very careless living riotous living the bible says he lost it are you with me church are you with me when you're praying for a certain blessing pray that you would get the blessing that's what the bible says in god's time in his time he makes all things beautiful Amen. so wait for god's time wait for the father's time wait for him to release it because a blessing that was supposed to be a blessing and it is out of season can actually become a curse that is not your portion in jesus name amen, amen. tonight i want to talk to you about support system for last week talk about god being our support system today i want to talk about a specifically support system family is very important to have a support system within the family hallelujah are you with me church it's so important that we understand this at an early age right now because listen in the days that we are living in the days that we are living at this point in time is not it's not it's not something that is uh, easy for all of us to live in including children including the teenagers including the young adults the grown up people it's it's it, look at the look at the uncertainty that we are bombarded with the uncertainty that we live around with the pressures of life hallelujah and it's so important to have our own family our own first family our own family to be a support system for everybody inside the house rather than looking for somebody outside to be a support system for our children rather than somebody outside looking to be a support system for our spouses am i making some sense church and i want to look at something from the bible today that talks about the importance of having of our own biological family i'm not talking about the church family i'll talk about it next week but our own biological family being our own support system in jesus name are you with me church because i know what i'm talking about from this pulpit because i i i i i have the i would say privilege i do have the privilege uh, to counsel somebody uh, who's who is coming from a what you call a very godly and a very ministerial family pastoral family to say and has been through tremendous pressure in life from a very young age subject to severe depression and anxiety absolute 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 uh, what you call uh, susceptible to uh, depression anxiety like this uh, snap of finger and the person's mood change and he can go into deep depression and it can be very very severe i won't call it uh, a coincidence I won't call it like oh it just happened stands no i believe it was god ordained that this person had to had to reach out absolute stranger reach out and we started talking mark these words the person said if i had not met at the right time giving the counsel of the lord probably that person wouldn't have been alive today i'm not talking about somebody who's 50 years old i'm talking about very very young very young very tender very tender age still still schooling rather i was still studying that kind of age the thought was that if i step out of the house i wish a car can hit me and go finish it not wants to jump in front of the car but the thought was there if it it is if it if a truck hits me today i'm okay with it i'm done i'm done with it so you can imagine the mental pressure what's the point i want to make coming from a very 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 what you call renowned uh active ministry house so much so no courage no what you call has the openness to approach the mom or the dad uh and say yeah i have this issue so much so that the person is given into 
and unbeliever counseling, outside counseling. And the counseling has been going on for quite some time. It is, it's useless. It's just not been effectual. Listen, the real support system is in God's word. Amen. Rest everything is a gimmick. It's a money-making thing. But I thank God, it's been a couple of months now, and the person is on road to recovery. Now I call sometimes in once in three weeks, once in two weeks. Earlier the call was every day. Sometimes the call was one hour or maybe even more. Just going back to the word of God, going back to the word of God, going back to the word of God. What's the point on the drive? Parents pay attention to, today's service is completely dedicated to mom and dad. Today's service is completely dedicated to all the older brothers and older sisters. Today's service is committed or rather is dedicated to all the cousins, the older ones, cousins. Remember this word, cousins. Is dedicated to, the, to family today. Are you with me, church? We're going to be conscious that from today, we're going to pray that from today, we're going to be very conscious of how the support system is there. If it is not there, we'll start putting the, the building block from today. We're going to take the first step of having a support system where the children have the openness. Listen, in the corporate world, there is something called when a manager says, oh, I have an open door policy. You can come anytime. We're going to have that thing that in our house, my dad or my mom or my brother or my sister is going to be an open door policy. No inhibition. There is no restriction. I can talk on any topic. I have this problem. I need help. Come on, guys. Are you with me? There are people who don't have the solution and they have the, they, they carry that burden that weight for a very, very long time of childhood. They've grown up, but they still have that thing. They don't know how to deal with it. Because why? They didn't find the right support system in the family. Hallelujah. The Bible says there was a great man of God. His name was David. He became a king. And he was no ordinary, the Bible says, because God testified about this young man saying what? This guy is after my heart. Just like me, just the way I think, the way I, 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 I want to do things, this guy has the same heart. He's got a heart like mine. God testified it. When the Bible says that God, uh, through, the, uh, through, through, through Samuel, gave a very sharp rebuke to King Saul. And he told him, listen, your days are over, finished. You disobeyed God. You did not fulfill what God asked you to do. On the contrary, you did your own thing. Listen, you are replaced, God told him. And while he's telling that you are dethroned, in the same conversation, he said what? God has sought for a man. God has sought for a man. God has sought for a man after his own heart. After the Bible says what? Then that talks about in the book of Samuel 15. He says, I sought, God has sought for a man. When God finished that conversation with, with Samuel, the, uh, uh, Samuel's conversation with, with Saul, the Bible says what? In the book of Psalms 89, he says, God found David. First, he says, God sought. God found David, the Bible says. So uh, look at this. David's relationship with God was unique. David's his spiritual life was rocking in modern day world, in modern day language. Rocking. And it, it was happening. So much so, the, the, God did not hold back saying, this guy has a heart like mine. David had an ongoing relationship with God way before he could be anointed to be a replacement for King Saul. From his younger days, he was sold out to God. Even when he was a nobody, he had a relationship happening with God. Am I making some sense, church? It was not that after God promoted him and God blessed him, and then he began. No, no, no. Way before he had a history with God. Hallelujah. No wonder this man could write so many songs, so many psalms. Hallelujah. I said this before here also. The greatest songwriter ever written on the, uh, uh, ever written some songs in the face of the earth or the history of mankind. There's nobody greater than David. There are other songwriters came, went and got finished. It has shelf life for one year, two years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years gone. But listen, David's songs are still, still sung today. They're sung in different languages. They're sung in different parts of the world. They're looking from the book of, they pick from the book of Psalms and they're still singing those songs. Hallelujah. Even today we sang. 
God, I look to you. From where my help comes from. Today also we sang. By the way, that is from David. Not Jen Johnson. She took it from the Bible. If you think that Jen Johnson wrote it, no. It is from the word of God. Where did she pick it up from? From David's book. So that's the kind of relationship that he had. Because this man had a heart for the Lord. Sold out to God. He never, never, uh, as far as his spirituality is concerned, he was not somebody who was going down. He was going higher and higher, closer and closer to God. The Bible says that he became the king of Israel. And then he had children. Yet he, he, he had, the Bible talks about the first six boys. Starting with Amnon, his first boy. The Bible says that, endorses that he was a great man, great, great, great. As far as his relationship with us, great. Anointed, great. He was a prophet, great. He was a king, great. He was a priest. He fit in all the offices. That's how he was. God made an exception for David. But the Bible says what? When it came to parenting, when it came to be a father, he was the most stinkiest father. Useless father. As far as his life going on with God was awesome. But when it came to fathering his own sons, there was a problem. One of the sons was a rapist, the number one guy. The number three guy, Absalom, he was a murderer. He finished, he finished and killed the first boy, Amnon. That's the kind of parenting that he was in. He never raised up those boys in the way he was walking with God. Hallelujah. Anointing has its place, parenting has its place. Come on guys, are you with me? Just because you're the most powerful person on the face of the earth, by automatically your children are not raised up like that. You have to invest. You have to have that dual up. Listen, let's put it the other way. You know greenhouse in farming? It's curated. It's man-made. It's intentional. It's built. It is not automatic. There's a difference between forest and field. There's a difference between forest and a greenhouse. Ecosystem. It is not naturally. No, you have to be deliberate, intentional, and build it up. When it came to that, when it came to his ch parenting part or his father part for his sons, he failed miserably. By the way, how did he fight Goliath? How did he bring Goliath down? Boxing match? Come on, let's do boxing. Or was it through wrestling match? WWE, what? WWE, come on, come on. Did, was he that close combat? Was it a slapping contest? Let's see who can stand the slap. No, it was not. What was the contest? What was his choice? He used what? A sling, right? Now, sling is something that's close by. It's from a distance. That was an issue with, uh, with David. He always dealt with problems from a distance. I'll prove it to you from the word of God. He always looked at things because that's how he dealt with That's what he was trained at. How? To look at problems and from a distance strike it down. When the Bible says that Amnon raped his own sister, Absalom was mad. How can he do it to my sister? And he was very, very angry. It took about two years. He said he got his man. And two years later he killed him. When Absalom killed Amnon, the Bible says the father got to know and Absin, Absalom vanished. He became a fugitive. And jo Why say Joseph? David was trying to address the problem from a distance. Why? He was conditioned to handle problems from a distance. All the dads in the house, when it comes to your children, don't deal with their problems from a distance. Get close to them. All the moms in the house. Don't try to address any problems from a distance. No, no, no. You need to have face to face, one on one. Close combat. Come on guys, am I making some sense? That's what happened with David and Absalom. It became a distance. The gulf was so wide. They could never come together. So much so that the Bible says what? The, the, the whole thing reversed. All along Absalom was running for his life. Now it went the other way around. Absalom was after the father. And all along, David was running from Saul. Now came a time that he was running from his own son. He was in fear, constant fear. When this guy is going to come and attack? Where is he going to? Who is going to deceive me? Who is going to? He was constant fear happening in the house. Listen, fathers in the house, do not be afraid of your children. Oh my God. Were you there in Dubai service today? 
Were you there in Dubai service today? When I said this thing, what happened in the church? <laughs> Dubai church come to Abu Dhabi. Uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi church come to Dubai, you'll know. When I shared this, people were shouting in the church because they received it. I will say it one more time in your face. All the dads in the house, look at me. Don't be afraid of your children. All the moms in the house, no matter where they reach in life, don't be afraid of your children to address if there is any problem. Amen. Deal with them, sit with them. Let them know that you are the dad, you are the mom, not the other way around. And in the, in the, in the time of uh, David and Absalom, it reversed. The father was running. Listen, you will never run from your children. All the moms and dads, you will never run from your children. You will not be afraid to face your children in the name of Jesus. You will stand with them before them. And if it means correction, you will correct. Not from a distance. Bring them close. I'm not telling, don't be, I'm not telling you be a policeman for your children. No. Be a father. Be a mother around them. Amen. Hallelujah. I, am I making some sense? Long story short. The Bible says, when the war was raged, there was this captain in the army of David, Joab. He went and killed Absalom. And there was great victory that day. Turn your Bibles today. Please turn your Bibles with me. I love you, Jesus. To 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1. The Bible says they came back with shouts of victory. They came back thinking it's going to be a celebration time in the kingdom. They were very, very joyful. But when they came back, look at what happened. Verse 19, and it was told, Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and is mourning for Absalom. And the victory that day turned into mourning unto all the people. Listen, this is never going to be your portion in Jesus' name. Your victory will never turn into your mourning. Come on, church, are you with me? Your blessing will never turn into mourning in the name of Jesus. Look at these guys. Victory should be what? Celebration. Dance. No, no, no. The Bible says their victory that day turned into mourning. Look at what happened. He says what? For the people heard that day how the king was grieved for his son. And the people went to stealth that day unto the, into the city as people being ashamed steal away when they face in the battle or flee in the battle. But the king covered his face and cried with a loud voice, Oh my son Absalom, Absalom, oh my son, my son. And Joab came into the house of the king and they said, what did he say? Thou hast covered with shame the day, this day, the faces of all your servants who this day have saved your life and the lives of your sons and of your daughters and of your and the lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines. In thou which that loves thy enemies and hates your friends. For you have declared this day that you have regard neither the princes nor the servants. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, he would, we would have all died this day. Then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore arise. Look at what he says. Now therefore arise. Go and speak kindly unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you go not forth, there will not any one tarry here this night. And that will be worse unto thee. All the evil that befell thee from the days of your youth until now. That's the word of the Lord. Did you hear that? Hallelujah. By the way, who was talking? The captain was talking. Talk, talking to whom? Same level? No, he was talking to the number one guy, the king of the land. Look at the way he talked to him. He did not plead him, sir, please, sir. Sir, what are you doing? No, there was no please, there was no thank you, there was no, no cuddling. Are you with me, church? You know, when you want to cuddle, you want to pat somebody, you want to like, you know, it's okay, you're going through sorrow. 
Guys, if there is a loss in, in your family or in your friend's family, how do you deal with them? How do you deal with them? Hey, buddy, how are you doing? High five. Do you kick them out and say, get up, man, what? No, no, no. You mourn with them. You cry with them. You'll hug them. You'll embrace them. You'll get them close. You'll hold their hand. Yes or no? Yes, guys. Is that the way he dealt right now? No, not at all. Hallelujah. In the olden days, we used to have a scooter called Bajaj. Bajaj scooter, remember? Remember? We have to start the kick. If you have to start the bike, you have to kick. Yeah? If it was, if it was a genuine Bajaj, it will never start on a kick. You have to tilt it down. And then you... Today you have ignition, touch. Today we have a generation who don't want kick start. They want touch start. You heard what I said? Listen, here David was getting a kick start. Job was not ready to, you know, speak, you know, goody goody words. He was sharp rebuke. Get up. Look at what you've reduced yourself to. You should be ashamed. Rather, in fear, we are feeling ashamed. The people who fought for you, look at them. Their faces are hanging down. Look at the way you're conducting yourself. Get up. He says, had it not been for these people who saved your life, your full family, look, had it not been for these people, we would not be standing here. Listen, he told him, if Absalom was alive, probably we would have been dead. He shook him up. Hallelujah. Amen. David did not get up and give him a slap and tell him, do you know whom you are talking to? Not at all. Look at verse number 8. Look at the way he reacted. Look, or rather responded. Look at David's response. And the Bible says, Then the king arose and sat in the gate. Did you see that? He arose and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people saying, What did they say? The king, behold, the king does what? Sit in the gate. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen church. If there are, some, there are people in your life, and you are expecting there to be a good support system. Don't expect them to give you touch start. Yes. Yes. I really sympathize with you. Yes. I feel sorry for you. No, no, no. Look for those support systems will give you kick start. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you need that kick start. It took him back to his senses. And where did he go? He went to his post. He went to his position. He went to his place. He to, went to the... By the way, what is gate? To be part of the gate, to be at the gate is not an ordinary thing. It's not, a, it's not a menial thing. It's a place of authority. Are you with me, church? To be at the place of authority, uh, to be at the place of the gate, in charge of the gate, to sit there is a place of absolute authority. Because a guy who's in charge of the gate, he's, he is, has the authority who he lets in and who lets out, who goes out. Do you know there are some gates in this part of the world? And what are they called? There are gates, airports, airports. Are you sure? In the airport, there is something gate. There is a gate there. Immigration. immigration. Somebody knows it very well last night. <laughs> Somebody knows it very well. Immigration. <laughs> they have experienced yesterday. Immigration. Ah, have you seen the immigration officer? He has a, even if you have a valid visa, he can reject the entry and exit. Come on, guys, talk to me. It's a place of authority. What was he saying? He gave him a kick start and says, get up, get to your place of authority. Get to your place of your post. Get to the post. Get to the position where you're supposed to be seated. Come on guys, are you with me? Was David offended? He was not offended. He got up. The very thing that the, his action says, he took the word of Joab and he went to his place. Listen church, if there are some people who are that kind of support in your life, who speak the truth in your face, don't be offended at them. Amen. Don't be upset with it. Uh, uh, don't return. My, how can you? No, no, no. Hold a minute. They are waking you up to go to your place. Yes. They are waking you up to get to your place where you're supposed to be. Amen. Come on, guys. Are you with me? Yes. Don't be. In fact, go and give them a hug and say, thank you for your life. Thank you. You have the audacity. You have the, listen, you need to have this kind of support system where people can look into your face and tell you what is right and what is wrong. Yes. Value such people. Value, value, value such people. Don't go after those people who only talk about good about you. And it could be a lie. It can be very deceptive. 
Don't look for people. What you want to hear, have that kind of friendship. No, 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 no. You need Joabs in life. You need Joabs in life. Listen, you need Joabs in life who will fight for you. Amen. The Bible says Joab, fought, Joab did what? He fought for David to save his king. These are the real support system in life. Yes. Who will fight? Come on guys, are you with me? Look for the Joabs. Don't, re don't reject them. Don't kick them out. If, they, if, they're, if they're there in a position to kick you, sir, go, be my guest. Wake me up. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Job was not part of the family. But tonight I want to talk about family. Job, uh, David, the Bible says what? After giving birth to these boys, they were absolutely useless. The Bible says he gave, to, he gave birth to one more boy. And he was very special. What's his name? Solomon. Solomon. He learned his lesson from the way he fathered the other boys. But when it came to Solomon, this guy was special. He said, all the things that I did with, towards my, uh, uh, ignored my children, how I should have raised them up, I will not do the same mistakes with this son. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? And he raised Solomon in the fear of the Lord along with his wife. If you really want to know how he raised him up, then you should read the book of Proverbs. Specifically chapter 4. Specifically chapter 4 you should read. That tells volumes, that speaks volumes of how Solomon was actually raised up by this amazing mom and an amazing dad. They raised up because he knew that, okay, my relationship with God is awesome. But when it came to my relationship with my own family, there is a problem here. He learned it quickly. Or rather he learned it at a, at a, at a cost after losing Absalom. After losing Amnon. He lost these boys. Hallelujah. Amnon should have been on that place. Replacement or the next guy in charge. But the Bible says he, would, he died before his age. When Solomon was raised, he was raised in the fear of the Lord. He was brought up in the ways of the Lord. So when David passed away, when David went ahead, or when David went out of his life and he was not allowed, no, 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 no longer around to counsel him, Solomon walked in the ways of his dad, the way his mom and dad raised him up, and he walked in the ways of the Lord. See what the Bible says. Go to the book of... Uh, turn your Bibles with me to the book of... Uh, Second Chronicle, uh, First Chronicles, chapter twenty-two. First Chronicles, chapter twenty-two. First Chronicles, chapter twenty-two. David was somebody who was very conscious of building a house for the Lord. Very conscious, very excited, very super excited. He had this plan for a very, very long time, and he was preparing over many number of years. To build the house of the Lord. And what did he do? Look at what the Bible says. Verse 21, uh, chapter 22 verse 1. And David said, this is the house of the Lord God. This is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded to gather together the, 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 the sojourners who were there in the land of Israel. And he said, masons to hew, wrought, I, wrought stones to be built, to build the house of God. David prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates and of the joinings and bronze in abundance beyond weight. Also cedar trees in abundance for the Sidonians and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. Now David, what did he do? David said, Solomon, my son is young and tender, inexperienced. He is young and he is tender. He doesn't have the expertise yet. He doesn't have the experience yet. He says what? The house of the Lord is to be built for the Lord must be what? Very magnificent. And it must be of fame. And it must be that. And it should do what? It should be full of glory throughout all the country or countries. Country or countries. Throughout the world. Countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. It was his idea to build. But God said, no, 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 you will not build it. You're a man of bloodshed. There's too much of blood on your hand. You will not build it. Your son will build it. 
David was not upset with God. So Lord, I've worked all along. I'm the one who's collected. I'm the one who's prepared. I'm the no, 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 no. He was happy to pass on the baton to his son. He was very happy. Now he did not just pass on. Oh, God wants you to build. Can't do it. No, no, no. The Bible says what? Over the years and over the years, over the years, over season after season, he collected iron, he collected bronze, he collected gold, he collected silver, he collected timber, he collected everything that was needed towards the building of the temple of the Lord. And when he passed on the thing to his boy, when he passed on the vision to his boy, when he passed on, he did not pass on any tidbits here and there. But he passed on in much abundance that he says what? My son should build a very magnificent house for the Lord. Full of fame, not within the city, but throughout the world, countries. Where well, the glory of that thing shall be spoken across the globe. And then the Bible says, well, look at, go, go, to, the, go to that verse, the full verse, the full verse. Yeah. Look at that. So David prepared abundantly, the Bible says, before it. All the dads in the house. All the moms in the house, prepare for your children well in advance. Amen. Amen. Are you with me, church? Build that kind of support system that when you are dead and gone, there is no lack for them. Amen. They have the support system in the house. I'm not just talking about building bungalows and having lines of cars and various brands. Church, please don't, don't go in that direction. I'm not talking about the wealth of this country or wealth of this world. I'm talking about from a spiritual standpoint. Build them up emotionally that when you're gone, there is a lot of deposits that is there ready for them. That they don't have to look for somebody. They don't have to go out and say, I need this. No, no, no. The Bible says the father, he said what? He therefore, he now made preparation. He started building up for them. That the son didn't have to look for any kind of support outside because dad already did it. Hallelujah. Listen, it does not matter if you have not been a great parent till today. But today you're going to say, God, I want to have a change. David started off very bad as a parent, but he didn't end up that way. He changed. Here is the Bible. Here is the proof. He changed. He said, no, I'm not going to raise this guy like a wayward. This guy is not going to be one of those guys, my first, all, my, all my first set of boys. This guy, this guy is something different. And he invested. And the way he invested, listen, rest is history. Did he build a magnificent house for the Lord? One of the greatest building ever built on the face of the earth in the history of mankind was built by Solomon. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Go to 2 Kings. Oh, before you go to 2 Kings, go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 6. The temple is built. The temple is set. The temple is, you know, the, the, the decor, the glory is like, you know, it could take away somebody's, uh, somebody's breath. That was that spectacular. Jaws would drop just looking at it like they, they were in awe. Chapter 6 is where Solomon is dedicating this in prayer. It's a prayer that he's talking. He's talking to God. It's a beautiful prayer that he's made. But jump down to verse number 42, last verse. Go to chapter 6, verse 42. You should take your time and read this prayer of dedication of Solomon. But look at verse number 42. What did he say? O Lord God, turn not away your face of thy anointed. Remember the mercies of David, your servant. By the way, by the time he came to this place, it was 11 years, that David is dead and gone. David is not around that place. In the time of this dedication that's happening, this prayer that is happening, David is not around. 11 years have passed in that time. And here the Bible says what? He took his time and he began to pray. And look at the way he says, Lord, do not turn your face from the one whom you have anointed. And then he adds something to that. Remember the mercies of David, your servant. And look at the way God responds back. Verse number one. Chapter 7. Now when Solomon had ceased praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Verse number 2. 
the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord. Why? Because of the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Why? Because the moment he prayed at verse number 42, Lord, remember the mercies that you extended towards David. Look at the way God honored it. The Bible says that place was filled with the glory. No, no need of anybody to stand here and minister. Everybody moved out because the glory just took over the entire place. God remembered David. All the parents and the dads and the moms in the house. Live a life that when you are dead and gone, your legacy is still there. Your credit is still there with God. Your children live off your... Come on, guys. Your children live off your credit. That's how it happened. They live, Solomon lived off the credit of his father. 11 years after that, he's built a spectacular thing. No, no, no. It is not because of the spectacular thing that he built. God showed up in that house that day. Why? Because of David. That's the kind of life that he lived. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me, church? Go to 1 Kings. Go to 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. Go to verse number 12, uh, 11. Go to 11. Solomon is well established. All kinds of things happening in his life. Very successful. But he drifted away. He went and married all foreign women. And these foreign women, they came back with what? They brought their old gods along with them. And Solomon got messed up with all their gods. That's the scenario here. Look at verse number 11. Therefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done by thee, thou hast not kept the covenant, thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you, and I will give it to your servant. Notwithstanding in the days, I will not do it. Why? Why? He says, I will not do it. Why? Come on, church. Verse number 12. Ah, is there. He says what? Notwithstanding, in your days, I will not do it. Why? For David, your father's sake, I will not tear it out of your... I will tear it out of the hand of your son. Did you see that? He says, as long as you are concerned, I'm sparing you. I'm not sparing you that you built a big house and a beautiful house. No, no, no. I'm sparing you now... Simply because of your dad. Listen, this is the portion of our children. Amen. Our children will live off our credit. Oh, come on, guys. Amen. Pray and ask God. By the way, this is 23 years now. 23 years is dead and gone. David is not around in that place. 20 plus years, dad is not around and God still remembers. Hey, listen, because of your dad, I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to touch your position. I'm not going to tear your kingdom down. Later, maybe with your son, I will tell. But with you, I'm going to spare you. I'm only simply remembering because of your father's sake. What a support system is this? That even if the father is dead and gone after a long time, that is still intact. Fast forward. Let's go a couple of centuries down the line. Go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 19. 2 Kings chapter 19. 2 Kings chapter 19. In the time of Hezekiah, the Bible says, the Assyrian army came and surrounded them and Hezekiah panicked. There was no chance. He reached out to God in prayer. He said, God, we need deliverance right now. If you cannot save, nobody else can. It became that dire circumstance. He reached out to God. And he brought about a prayer movement in his time. And God answered. Go to verse 31. He says, for out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they shall escape out of my Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come near, he shall not come into your city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast a mold against it. Look at verse number 33. By the way he came, by the same shall he return. 
and shall not come into this city, says the Lord. Why? Verse 34, he says what? I will defend this city. To do what? To save it. For my sake and for who? And for who? And for my servant David's sake. Wow. Church, this is 300 plus years later. He did not just remain at 11 years and 20. 300 years down the line, God is still remembering David. My David. It's in the same lineage, same bloodline, same. I'm going to stay with that 300. I'm going to stay with my covenant. With, come on guys, are you with me? I'm going to stay with my covenant that I made with David. Listen, that's a portion of every dad and mom in this house. Yes. That the mercy of God is from generation to generation to generation. Thousand generations. Church, if you're talking about family support system, build this kind of family support system that your generation that are yet to be born, they will enjoy and live off your credit with God. Amen. What has Hezekiah got to do with David here? But the Bible says what? God said, I will defend your city. Not only defend, I will save it. And then he says, for my sake and my servant David's sake. What an amazing man this is. Look at the way God changed this guy's life. He immediately realized that what mistakes that he raised, uh, he did as far as his walk, as far as raising his sons were. But when he did that thing right correctly in the time of Solomon, God changed it off completely. That he extended his mercy to all his children and generation and generation and generation. And he kept on repeating, for my servant David's sake, for my servant David's sake, for my servant David's sake. May it be said about you, may it be said about me, as parents serving God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Pray and ask God for grace tonight, this evening. Lord, that I want to build that kind of support system, my children. Even the children that I'm yet to see thousands of years later, Lord, they will enjoy what I built today. In Jesus' name. Like I'm just not only talking to mom and dad in the house. I also want to talk to cousins here. Do you guys have cousins? No, no, yes, yes, yes. yes. Cousins are your family? Yes. yes. You remember Mordecai and Esther? Go to chapter 2, verse number 7. Esther chapter 2, verse number 7. Esther chapter 2, verse number 7. Esther chapter 2, verse number 7. You have brothers and sisters? You have cousins. Now look at what the Bible says. Verse number 7. Mordecai he brought up Hadassah. That is Esther. His uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful. Whom Mordecai when his father and mother were dead. He took for what? He took what? He took for his own daughter. He didn't take her for his own maid. They were cousins. Come on guys, are you with me? If you're, if you're somebody who's of age and you have cousins who are younger than you, listen, don't treat them as your cousins. Treat them as your children. Look at this man. He left his ambition aside. He left everything aside. And now he's signing her up to be a support for his own cousin to sign up to be the queen or replacement for the queen was just replaced. Because the queen of this king, she disobeyed or she just ridiculed him and she says, no way. Because he told her, he called her one day, he threw up a big banquet and he said, can you come and entertain us? He says, what's wrong with you? You're joking. The Bible says that offended the king so severely that he says, no way. I'm not going to take this. He was, she was replaced overnight and they had a running, they ran a beauty contest. So whoever wins this beauty contest is going to be my wife. Mordecai enrolled. What an amazing support system that cousin brother was. To this sister she was she was naive she was vulnerable she was okay of course the bible talks about she was pretty looking and all that stuff but the way he took care of her he didn't take care of her from far he took care of her very close like a dad he took care of her like her own father like her own daughter and the, look at the way the way the story ends did the story end well that itself speaks volumes of what kind of Mordecai man was to his own cousin's sister. 
Hallelujah. By the way, did, did, did Esther reach her destiny? If you're ever going to adopt your cousin and you want to be a support system, make sure, make sure that they reach a destiny in life. Amen. Come on, guys. Are you with me? Yes. Look, the way you're going to invest, the look, the way you are going to nurture, the way you're going to be, you're going to make up, I'm going to be a mom and I'm going to be a dad to this one till this one reaches her destiny. Did Esther reach her destiny? Yes. Amen. Esther became a game changer. She became an agent. of Who prepared Esther? It is Mordecai. Most of the time, the highlight is on Esther because she reached that place. If there was no Mordecai, there was no Esther. If there was no Mordecai, there was no destiny. Are you with me? You got to adopt, you got to own whoever that God gives in your hand. Listen, don't ignore your children, don't ignore your cousins, don't ignore your brothers, don't ignore your siblings, don't let them be on. The, pray, God, I'm not a mama yet, I'm not a dad yet, but I want to be one. Are you with me? You got to own your brothers. You got to own your sister. You got to own your sibling. I'm going to be like my, my like a dad. I'm going to be. Listen, please don't play the older brother role. Dangerous to be an older brother. That's what the Bible says. He did not say he became an older brother. No, no. He became a father. Explanation? Chahiye, nahi chahiye. Want, no want. Because why? Don't try to be an older brother. Don't try to be an older sister. You know when the prodigal son came home? The older brother got upset. But the father embraced. Father will always embrace. Older brothers will get, ah, the stick will come out. Stop being an older brother. Stop being an older sister to anybody. Be a father, be a mother. Are you with me? Remember one thing. It is always, remember one thing. Please listen to this very well. Many people miss out. And many people in the church have missed out. They are no more in the church now. Because they don't understand. Because they operate under the spirit of an older brother. Listen, inheritance is always from the father, never from the older brother. Amen. Amen. I'll say it one more time. Inheritance, blessing is always from the parents. Amen. It is not from the older brother or the older sister. Amen. That's why don't try to be an older brother or an older sister. Blessing is always with the father. Amen. That's what he passed it down to Esther and she reached her destiny. Can I say one more thing? Every deed is a seed in someone's life. Amen. Every deed is a seed in somebody else's life. If you ever want to be a mom and if you ever want to be a dad, it is very sacrificial. <laughs> it is not easy. Are you with me? If the baby has messed, you don't say change the pamper to your neighbor. Hey, come on, do it. You have to do it. It's a messy job. Come on, guys, are you with me? If you have to clean it up, you have to clean it. It's messy, it's sacrificial. There are times that you have to go through sleepless nights. So being a father, being a mother is not a joke. It's real, real hard work. In Jesus' name. I'll say one more thing. Fathers who don't have a dream can never give their sons a destiny. Fathers who don't have a dream can never bring their children to their destiny. Pray, God, I want to be that kind of support system to my son. That kind of dream that I will help them to reach their destiny. Amen. That's exactly what happened with Mordecai. He had a dream for Esther. Amen. He left aside his ambition. He left aside his own family. He left aside everything. He says, I'm going to invest in this one. If you ever think of investing into somebody's life, invest like this, like a father and like a mother. It's worth. Amen. <laughs> so don't invest like a brother and your sister. Invest like a father. Amen. Come on, guys. Are you with me? Amen. Because the fathers will go to the extent of doing anything and everything to invest in their sons. Mm. Ha, come on, guys. Hey, come on. Talk to me. Brothers will not do it. Dad will do it. Mom will. Why? This is mine. They will go out of the way to invest in their children. Am I making some sense to church this morning? So if you ever want to be, that you may not be married, you may be single, but if you want to invest in someone, you want to go that extra mile, that go with that heart, God, I want to be a father to this one. I want to be a mother to this one. In Jesus' name. 
Am I making some sense this evening, church? Listen, build this kind of this kind of ecosystem in your house. Build this kind of greenhouse that there is in the house there is perfect support system for your children. Perfect system. Support system for your spouse. Think for a minute. I'm in the house and Anna's going outside for counseling. The problem is not with Anna. The problem is with me. You, you heard what I'm saying? The problem is not with her. The problem is with why? I've not been a support for her. Come on, am I making some sense? Can I make it a little more open? Yes, no, no. Practical ho jai? If the daughter is running to the mother for counseling, the problem is not with the daughter. The problem is with the husband. Nobody will say amen to that now. No one will have the guts to look and say amen. Yes. Listen. If your wife is running somewhere else, going outside looking for counsel, looking for cry, looking for shoulder, looking for support, emotional support, whatever support you want to call it, the problem is not with the wife. The problem is with the husband. And it's vice versa. If the husband is going somewhere else, if he's going to his mother's house and sobbing and crying, the problem is not with the husband. The problem is with the wife. Why? She has not been around. Come on, guys. Am I making some sense? Ask God for grace. That the kind of ecosystem in the house will be not just for the children. It will also be for the spouse. It will not just be for the mom and dad, but it will also be between the sibling. That will be an ecosystem that supports the whole system. That supports the entire family. Hallelujah. Go to the book of Timothy. Go to the book of Timothy. Let's arise and pray after this quickly. One verse, two verses and we we'll arise and pray. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. Look at what the Bible says. Paul is talking to Timothy, Pastor Timothy. He's talking to not an ordinary kid, but he's talking to an established pastor. Young fellow, but very sound in the Lord, very sound in the word, very sound in leading, leadership. See what the Bible says. Very sound in faith. He says what? When I call to remembrance, he says, when I just think of you, when I call to remembrance of your unfeigned, what is unfeigned? Very sincere, not pretense, not pretending. But when he talks about faith, I am... He said, I'm forced to remember of your faith, which is a faith that is pure, sincere. He says, I'm called to remembrance of your unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt, which dwelt in your grandmother, Lois, and now your mother, Eunice. And I'm persuaded, I'm convinced that the same is also in you. In one verse, three generation. Grandmother, mother, and the son, or the grand, grandson. Hallelujah. This grandson did not come, drop from the heavens as pastor. He was, he was homegrown. Who grew him up? His grandmother. Who nurtured him up? Mother. What a support system is this? He didn't sign up to a school and go to theology college and then he got a certificate. Now he's become a pastor. No, he went to the theology, uh, he went to theology college where? In his house. What kind of support system is there? That the grandmother, the way she has brought up her own daughter, Eunice. That that good mother has passed it on to the next generation of son. And raised up an amazing boy with an unfeigned faith. Sincere, pure, not pretending. Very strong faith. Wow. I want to be in this family. I want to be this kind of a house. I want to have this kind of support system in my family. Come on guys, am I making some sense church? Another 10 years from now, another 15 years from now, some of us are going to be grandparents. Pray from now. Lord, I want to be that grandmom. I want to be that grandmother who has raised up my son and my daughter so well that when he brings birth, how he gives birth, they'll have an... Come on, guys, talk to me. What a, what a testimony that this is. Look at the way Paul is celebrating not... Timothy alone, but he's celebrating the grandmother. It started off with your grandmother. It started off with your mom. And look at the way you are in the same line. That means Timothy had what you call a perfect 
support system in the house. What a culture that he was raised up. That he didn't deviate here and there. He became a man of God as a pastor. Hallelujah. Listen, mom and dad, there are some pastors in your own house. Amen. Pastors don't fall from top. Pastors are supposed to be homegrown. 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 Before you send them to any theology college, make them sit down in your theology college in your house. Let them see how the grandmom is praying. Let them see how the mom is praying. Let them see. See the, you know last week I spoke one word. He says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. He says because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. All the dads, all the grandmoms, would be grandmoms, would be uh, uh, granddads, moms and dads in the house. Please do not ignore the word of God. Please do not reject the word of God. If you say that I don't want my children to be ignored by God, if I don't want my children to be rejected by God, then don't reject God's word. Are you with me, church? Let them see it. Sit down. Sit down with your book and let them see that my dad is reading. I know my dad is praying. I know my dad is picking up something for me. My mom is doing it. She's spending some time. She's spending some time. I told you about the, the Joshua lingering, right? We don't have an issue with lingering. We all linger. The whole day we are lingering. Sometimes one third of our time of the whole day is gone in lingering on Facebook and other places. We have no issues with lingering. We have the appetite for lingering. But we have to linger in the right place. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard this statement? Behind every successful man, there is a successful woman. <laughs> Am I the only guy who has heard this and experienced if there is a wife, they say behind every successful husband, there is a successful wife. If the guy is not married, then what? No, behind every successful man is a successful woman, right? Correct? Yes or no? Yes. Why are you so religious? So very, uh, yes, yes, no, no. You'll remember me for the rest of your life, what I'm going to say. It's going to be on a very lighter note. But you'll remember me. Sorry, guys, who are not Indians. I apologize before that because what I'm going to say, maybe it's not going to appeal to you maybe because you don't know. If, uh, if, you, if, you, if you ever want to know, come to one of our Indian houses, you'll know what I'm going to say. Have you heard double tadka ka dal? Double tadka? It is not ordinary dal. Everybody makes dal, but double tadka has extra flavor. I see two moms here, double tadka. I wonder if Jesus can come down here and probably he can minister to you, then only I'll really get excited. What did you experience in Dubai today? When I said double tadka? Listen, half of the guys don't know what I said. There was an uproar in Dubai. They caught it. There was a noise. There was noise. Constant clapping in Dubai because they caught it in the spirit. What I just said. Look at this. I'll tell you one more thing. Please, all the men in the house, I want to look into your face. Don't, don't blink. Don't look here or there. Don't look there. Don't look at your watch. Don't look at, look at me in my face. Look in my face. I want to tell all the men. I want to even tell the boys in the house. Look at me. All the boys. All the men in the house. Never underwrite or never ignore the women or the, uh, the, the females in our church or in your life. Because God has wired them differently. God has wired women for detail. Am I the only blessed man in my life that I have a, I have a wife, she's, she's wired for detail? Amen. Women are wired for detail. Amen. No wonder they produce Timothy pastor. Yes. Double tadka. Not only the grandmother, even the mother was that amazing mother. This guy, behind every successful man, there is a successful woman. He didn't have women, he had women. Who? In his own house. Don't send them to that pastor. Don't send them to that preacher. Listen, you be, the, you be the preacher. You be the counselor in your house. Did I speak to all the women in the house? Men, do not underwrite, underwrite, underwrite or uh, berate the women that God has blessed us with, our girl children. Because God has wired them to think in detail.
I had no electricity for 10 days in my house because there was something went wrong in the building. I was very happy to take my thing and go out. I stayed in Christopher's house for due two days, and next thing they said, we're going to give you a hotel. And I was very happy to just take my go out. My wife said, wait, 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 wait. Put that off, put that off, put this in, put that this, put that there, fish. I said, fish was more valuable than me. <laughs> she started thinking so many things. She said, can you open that cabinet? There are some grains. Bring it out in the open. For me, it does not matter. I'm ready to go out. Look at the way she's wired. She says, can you open the fridge? Can you take out this? Can you take out that? Can you take out this? Can you take out that? Can you close the bathroom, this one? Because a light will come. She'll blow up all her makeup. Look at the way she's wired. That's why I said, women are no ordinary. Yes. Come on, guys. Yes. I want to speak over every daughter in this house. Yes. You are wired for detail. Yes. Are you with me? No wonder the Bible does not talk about the dad here. The Bible does not talk about the grandfather here. But the Bible does talk about the grandmother and does talk about the mother. That means it talks something about the women in the house. Our women are wired. We're going to pray. Every house will have that kind of godly women who will be that perfect support system for our children. Come, let's rise and pray then.